Hi everybody. All right, what we're going to do in this video is a pair sample t test using before and after date data. Um, now, when I taught elementary school, I did that for 31 years. We used to, um, and you might experience this. We used to um, give the students a pretest to measure exactly how much they knew about the lesson or the subject matter that they were going to be learning, and then there would, and then we would calculate the data. Uh, of course, and recorded, and we did it in, in this case, observe A or observation A, and then we would have some type of lesson, which of course would be the independent variable to change their behavior. That's what independent variable does. It's a treatment to change behavior, and then we would um, record the dependent variable, the, in other words, what was observed by giving them either the same pre-test as a post-test now, or we would give them a similar test that, w that related to the um, pre-test. So then uh, we would do the um, pair sample t-test. In other words, it's the same students that we are measuring. So this could be Tom, this is his scores, this could be Sally, this is her score, Jane, and so, 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 so forth. So we're observing the same person twice. Uh, pre-test to post-test or before and after. All right, now what we're going to do then is do a pair sample t-test. Now we got a no hypothesis. In other words, we're stating here that the observations between A and B are just going to be the same. In other words, um, um, there's not going to be any improvement. So it's e equal. And the alternative hypothesis in this case is that A and B um, are different different they're not they're not the same and um, and we have to look at the means for means difference to see if there was any difference um, oh I should have lowered the a and B but that's okay in this case all right so let's do a pair sample T test so we'll go to data and then we're using Excel remember we're using uh, go to data go to data analysis that's from the tool pack um, I already got the um, pair sample t-test highlighted for you. You can scroll down. You can see all the others. I'm going to press OK. Now, I want to get a little bit of practice ahead of time, so I want to get rid of all of that. There we go. All right, now I'm going to do variable one range would be observation one. Scroll all that data in there. Go back up. Do it again. Okay. And for um, observation B, we'll um, put all the data in there. Now, in this case, and this is another way of um, loading the data into the ranges, is control shift down arrow key. Now, make sure if you're using labels, and I am, I always like to use labels, it keeps me straight. Um, make sure it's checked. If you don't check it, it there's going to be an error that will come up and tell you. So it's just a reminder to check. Uh, to check. Alpha level, this is um, where we're deciding um, if there is a difference or no difference between observation A and B. Your alpha le le level, in this case, is um, 0 0.05. That's usually your default var variable. Uh, excuse me, your default alpha l l level. And um, if you want to change it, you can manually change it. When you read research pa papers and you probably will have to. Usually, 0.05 is usually the standard alpha level, um, but you can always cha change it if you wa want to. And we need an input range. I want to get rid of that. And I want to put it right here. All right, let's see what happens. All right, um, let's make it a little bit more readable for you all. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And there we go. Now, you will notice, okay, first, all of this information up here is your descriptive data. But we're really going to be concentrating on is the mean for um, both uh, for for the op observation, just by looking at it, you can kind of say, okay, maybe there is a difference. 
Let's scroll that up. Okay, maybe there is a difference because you notice that the um, overall means for um, for observation B is greater than the means for the uh, observation A. In other words, the post-test uh, means is greater than the post-test means. But this, does that mean there is a statistically significant difference? And that's where your inferential statistics would come come in. Now, there were 23 part participants, and your degree of freedom here is 22, and that's sim simply, and, and you all read about this, it's just N minus 1, and that's how you get the um, degree of freedom. Now, let's make some numbers a little bit more readable. This is a p-value for a one-tailed test. Now, we're doing a two-tailed test, but I still like to, being the type of person I am, I still want to make it re readable. So, you go, so what, I, what I did, I'll do, repeat that again. I um, highlighted sele or selected the cell, uh, right-click my mouse, go to Format Cell, go to Number, make sure your decimal level, you can change it to a greater number, but two seems to be the default, and I only want two de decimal, and it's point zero zero zero. By the way, if you ever see this type of number, the E indicates that it's going to be a zero point, how many zeros um, are, are attached, and this is, I think, eight spaces. In other words, zero point and eight more zeros from what I understand, and I'm going to change that to a more readable number. If you ever have to actually report on this, change the p change the p value to a um, readable p value. Now, in order to accept and reject the null hypothesis, um, now nowadays, and we're looking at the two tail now. If the p value is less than the alpha level which in this case was 0 0.05, make that a readable number, oh, do that again, 0 0.05, you can say yes, won't change, won't stay, one why, all right, well, let's, I'm not, not going to fight it if it doesn't change, all right, very good, since 0 is less than 0 0.05, that was your alpha level, yes, you can reject the no hypothesis. Yes, there is a diff difference. They are not equal anymore, and there is a difference between the uh, pretest to post-test. And by looking at the means, you can see definitely the, the, there was improvement in, in um, the student's behavior. In other words, there was learning going on. And when you read research papers, that you that's the um, that's the way they basically report uh, whether you're going to accept or reject a no hypothesis. But you can also look at the t value also. If the t statistics, that's the calculated t, is less than or greater than the um, critical t, in other words, that's the limits you can put on there. And remember, it's symmetrical, so this can be a positive and a negative number. If you take a bell-shaped curve and draw it, and you got your left side and your right side, you put your limits, um, 2.07 would be on the right side, negative 2.07 would be on the left side, and definitely um, negative um, 9.24 is less than the, um, the critical value. So yes, you that another way to indicate whether you should accept or reject no hypothesis. The p value and the critical value work hand in hand. They cannot contradict each other. All right, that's one way of doing it. Now, you got to be aware that there might be a time where they might ask you, let's reverse it. Let's put the after data first um, to the pretest. In other words, let's look at the post test. And, and change it in, in the range one to the pretest. Let's do that and see what happens. So I'm going to again go up to data, data analysis, pair sample. Now I'm going to again wipe all this out. 
and I'm going to keep the labels, I'm going to keep the value there, alpha, as 0.05, I'm going to get rid of that. Now, let's, in this range, let's put the um, post-test. I'm going to do control shift down arrow, and in range 2, I'm going to put the pre-test. You might be asked to do that if your supervisor asks you to do, do, do that, that, that way. And don't worry about the mean, uh, the hypothesis means. And we're going to put the data results right there and let's see what happens. I'm going to scroll over a little bit and everything. And let's clean that up a little bit. Let's just make it a little bit. I'm going to go there. There we go. And as you can see, the descriptive data is basically is, is the same. It's just just in reverse now. And you're um, I'm going to change again, change these p values so it's a little bit, it's workable. I'm doing the same thing. High select, right click, format cell, numbers. Make sure it's decimal is two places. Press OK. And as you can see, again, it's the same re results. You would then um, set the p-value. In this case, is less than um, the alpha le level. We would uh, reject the null hypothesis. And again, the critical T is symmetrical. Um, so it's neg it's point uh, it's two point zero seven on the um, right side and negative two point zero seven on the right side of your of your curve and the T stat definitely would go beyond into the rejection um, region um, of your of your of your da da data. Um, my suggestion is always draw a bell-shaped curve. I, I don't have to draw any abilities, abilities to do it here, but draw a bell-shaped curve. Get your critical value on the bell-shaped curve on the right side and le left side, and then that will help you to determine uh, where the T-stat uh, value would go. All right. Good luck with your um, work, and that's about what I say. Doc Chasen will be signing off. Here I go.